All right, so before I actually get started, I have a question for you. Yeah. How cold is liquid nitrogen? Isn't it like negative something degrees? Negative 17? Something. <laughs> it is negative something, <laughs> but what is that something now? Uh, Colder. 3,000. A little bit warmer than that. <laughs> what do you mean? Colder. Colder. Warmer. Negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative 321. All right. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna count to three, and then I want you guys to say go after, okay? Wait, you want us to say what? Go. Okay. Right. Three, two, one. Go. It's liquid nitrogen. It just looks like water because nitrogen is a color is a colorless and odorless gas, and therefore the liquid form of it is also colorless and odorless, much like tap water. So just to put it into perspective how cold liquid nitrogen actually is, uh, have either of you two played with dry ice before? No. All right. Well, dry ice is actually a solid carbon dioxide, and if you touch it for long enough, you actually will burn your hand. Uh, and that is only negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. So just think about that. Liquid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen is three times colder than that. But then that begs the question, if you can burn yourself with dry ice, how do I not burn myself with the liquid nitrogen? <laughs> kind of. That is, that's kind of the... So, uh, actually the answer is because of something, something known as the Leyden Frost Effect. Have either of you taken chemistry class? No. Okay, well the Leyden Frost Effect is actually a chemical phenomenon that a really old dude named Johann Gottlob Leyden Frost in Germany in 1756 discovered, there's yours. Me serve. Okay. Well, a well any of you, uh, Johann, Johann, uh, Johann saw that when you have a surf, that when you have a really hot surface, uh, that if you put a liquid on top of that, uh, so part of it will actually skid around and dance around, kind of like how the nitrogen was over here, if you saw. And the reason why that is, is because if that surface is hotter than the boiling point of the liquid, or in this case, hotter than three, uh, negative 321 degrees, the part of the liquid would almost instantaneously vaporize and get caught underneath uh, that liquid. Therefore, suspending the liquid above the surface and insulating it uh, from from that surface as well, therefore heating it more slowly. Uh, so, uh, have you ever actually Sorry, have you actually heated water before? Yeah. All right, so it's kind of the same principle there. Uh, the heat from the stove actually gets transferred into the water, therefore heating the water. Same kind of thing here. The, even though my cream is refrigerated, relatively uh, relative to the liquid nitrogen, it is still very, very hot. It is still actually very, very hot. And so that heat or that energy actually gets transferred from the cream into the nitrogen, evaporating the nitrogen, thus giving me the nitrogen vapors here, and also freezing the cream, since that energy is no longer in the cream. 
What happens if I don't mix it? Uh, then the flavoring uh, does not get mixed in properly with the cream, and so it might become a bit marble-like uh, in, in appearance, and then also not have a most not have a uniform taste. That and also the nitrogen will not get underneath the cream, therefore not all of the cream will actually get frozen. And parts of it will be extra frozen while other parts are still not frozen at all. I'm sorry? Why is yours more frozen than mine? Because it was literally just within the liquid nitrogen and yours has been sitting out sitting out for a bit. Since since the temperature difference of the air and the nitrogen is actually so vast that that uh, sub-zero's ice cream actually does melt a little bit faster than normal. Okay. 